For our templates, we'll start with the outside that is on the templates that you printed off. And then for the inside, hopefully you saw the note that said to trace the inside piece once you cut it out. And we'll use that. We won't use this one because your curve here may be different from the curve here. That's the, that was the purpose of drawing this template. So I like to have a sixteenth of an inch reveal around the edges and any of the openings. And you may not like that. And if you don't like to have a reveal and you want to have things go edge to edge, then you can just cut out the templates directly on the lines that you drew. Now because I want to have that sixteenth of an inch reveal, I'm going to take and mark, I'm using a red pen here so you can see it, I'm going to mark a sixteenth of an inch in around all of the sides and then also around the opening. So I'll do that and then show you what that looks like. So here are my templates with the red lines drawn and I'm going to cut on those red lines and then do a test fit on my actual building. Then once you've cut out these pieces, go ahead and do a little test fit. Oops, that's the wrong one. And see how they fit and make any adjustments that you might need to. Try them both out. And then we can use the center pieces. We can again draw some lines on these and we can make templates to go inside of our openings. So this time we'll draw the red line a sixteenth of an inch inside of the shape, inside of the dark line that we have. And then cut those out and those should be the templates that will fit inside of the little niches. So this time I just drew a line inside of the black line with a blue pen so that I could see it and I'll cut on those blue lines. So now I have all of my templates for decorative paper and obviously for this rectangular one you wouldn't have had to cut a, a template. You could just measure the size of the opening and subtract an eighth of an inch from both sides and that would be the size of a square to go inside or rectangle to go inside and have that sixteenth of an inch reveal. But anyway, here are the templates. To cut out my shapes, I've just used some temporary adhesive on the back of my template and put them on um, two pieces of my pattern paper. This orange is the side that I want to see on my building. And then I can just trace around, remove my template, and then cut around the, the trace lines. Now remember when you cut around the trace lines to cut just on the inside so you leave the line and then you'll have a cutout that is the exact shape that you want. So I'm going to go ahead and cut these two pieces out. We're not ready to attach anything yet, so just cut the shapes. Now we can turn our attention to the sides. And the sides will just be simple rectangles. And they measure an inch and a half wide and eight and a half tall an inch and a half by eight and a half. So that means if we want to have a sixteenth of an inch reveal on all the sides, we'll cut it one and three eighths wide, one and three eighths wide by eight and three eighths tall. One and three eighths by eight and three eighths. Now I like to have some ink on the edge of my pieces and it's purely optional of course. Um, if I wasn't going to ink I would at least take 
a marker or something and get rid of that white edge on the paper. But I'm going to ink around all of my paper and with this pattern paper I'm going to use gathered twigs. So I have my paper all inked now and I can get ready to attach it to section one. But before I do, I want to talk about one important thing. And that is that there's one side at this point that we will not put the paper on. And right now I have the side with the two holes in it, the two niches in it, facing up. I'm going to turn that to the right. So now on the left side is the one and on the right side is two. And make an X on that side. Do not attach the paper to this side yet. You can put the paper on the other three sides and just reserve the, the strip that's going to go on that side. Now to put this paper on, uh, on the strip that's going to end up going on the side that we marked with an X, you're going to want to use score tape for sure on that. I use score tape on the back of everything, but um, if you're not a person that likes to do that, most of the time it does not matter except for on the strip that goes with the X and then in these areas, these bigger areas here, there'll be some attachments that come on. So you want to have some good score tape coverage in the back of these areas. Now the rest of this you could put on with um, just regular adhesive. I liked, like I said, I like to use score tape. So I'm going to put the three sides on and then I'm going to reserve this side with the X. This is the paper that I've selected to go on the inside of this niche and so I just use some temporary adhesive to attach my template and then I can cut it out. And then on the bottom I'm going to use this paper and I've cut a strip 5 eighths of an inch wide because the niches are 3 quarters of an inch deep so that would be 5 eighths with the reveal and the opening is 2 and a half inches long so I'll cut it 2 and 3 eighths. And right now I'm not putting any paper around the um, the sides and the ceiling up here, I may change my mind at a later date. But I'm going to cut those two pieces, uh, put some score tape, ink them and put some score tape on them and fit them inside. So here's my paper inside of this niche and I just have a scrap piece of chipboard here. I just have craft so you can see it. And when I put this piece in down at the bottom, I just put this piece of scrap back in here and that helped me get this piece lined up with its reveal. And then also I pushed a little bit hard on the back of my niche here and so it's come a little unglued so you'll be, want to be careful about that. And if it does just take your detailed gluer and just you can put the point of it up inside of that top of that uh, part. And you won't be able to push on it, but that glue will help it get back in place. Now on the other side, I'm going to save these two to do when we do the windows and the dormers. So that is the decorative paper to this point on section one. For section two, we'll start out by making a template for the decorative paper that goes on the side with the openings. And I'll again take my red pen and come in a sixteenth of an inch around each one of the openings and the outside edge so that I'll get that nice reveal. And then I'll go ahead and cut out that template. Now that I have my template cut out, I can put some temporary adhesive on it and use it to cut out the piece that's going to go on the front. And for the piece that's going to go on the back side, 
we'll just cut a piece that has no holes in it that has the same outside dimensions. Now I'm going to use this 6 by 6 paper. It it's, has plenty of height for the front and the back. It's a little bit short on the sides and I'm going to have to make a patch. Now if that bothers you and you're using the same kind of paper that uh, I am or if you're using 6x6 six six paper um, and 12x12 12 12 paper, you'll want to pick a different paper to use for this building so that you won't have to have a patch. And just a little tip for dealing with these really skinny sides that are eighth of an inch. If you have eighth inch score tape, go ahead and run a band of that along each edge you can see I think I've got it on both sides. That'll give you a guideline and it also will give some strength to that um, skinny strip while you're cutting it. So for the sides, we'll start with two long rectangles that are an inch and three-eighths wide by six and three-eighths tall. One and three-eighths wide by six and three-eighths tall. And if you don't have uh, if you're like me, I'll just start out by cutting a, a six inch strip that's one and three eighths two times. So next, because I'm using six inch paper, I need to make a patch on each of these strips. If you're using, uh, if you were able to cut a strip that is six and three eighths inches long to begin with, you can just ignore this little patch section. But I'm going to just look through my scraps here and find something that will work work pretty well. Um, there won't be any exact matches, but this paper is pretty busy, so I don't think it will be that noticeable. And so I'm just going to cut and, and put on a piece. I'll use some score tape on the back and um, make that join so that I end up with uh, each piece will be 6 and 3 8 inches long. Now my pieces are six and three eighths inches long, so I'm going to take my inch and three eighths template, and I'm just going to work on the wrong side here. And again, I'm going to line it up so that the template, the edge of the top edge of the template, is right at the top edge of the paper, and then I'm just going to trace around those arcs. And I'll do that on both of them and cut that out. And I should have said, if you're like me and you made a patch, um, to put the patch at the bottom. So now before we attach this, let's look at our building because there are two walls on this one that we will not put the paper on quite yet. And one of them is the plain side, so I'm not going to put that paper on yet. And then if you put the plain side on the stand it up on one of the narrow sides, and the plain side is on the left, and the openings are to the right, then put an X on that thin side, because we won't put the paper on that area yet as well. So we can put the paper on the niche side and the side without an X. And when we put the paper on this plain side, just run a couple of extra strips of score tape down the center because we'll have the little steps and the door frame will come and attach on there and we want to have uh, the paper uh, well adhered to the building when we do that. Before you fasten down the paper on this side with the two um, niches, Cut a strip of black cardstock that is one inch by three inches, one inch by three inches, and on the back put two half inch pieces of score tape. Now if you only have quarter inch, just put four pieces of uh, quarter inch score tape. And you want to remove half of it, and then this is going to come down 
even with the edge it's hard to see on this black it's even right there with the top edge of that top hole and centered side by side it should just fit and we'll have a tab left here in the back that's going to help us put our roof on and then you can put this paper down Now I have my paper on two of the outsides and I'm ready to put paper on the inside of the niches. Uh, this paper is what I've selected to go on the backs and this stripy paper I'm going to use on the floors. Now these templates are just rectangular rectangles so I'm just going to measure them and then cut the paper. I'm not going to use the templates as templates per se and then I'll measure across the opening here it's two and a half so I'll cut my little strips I'll cut two of them five eighths inch wide by two and three eighths five eighths by two and three eighths and that'll give me the right measurements for the floors and so there's the paper inside of the little niches again I'm not putting anything on the sides or the ceiling uh, for now and these two sides will not put the paper on and that's it for building number two for right now For the section 3 templates, we'll still have our 16th inch reveal, but because of the way these were constructed by using the joining strips, we already have a 16th of an inch built in on each side. Each side, if you were to measure it right now, measures 3 and 1 eighth. So, since the templates are 3 inches wide, we already have that sixteenth of an inch reveal built in on the vertical edges. So we do not need to draw anything in on the outside vertical edges. Now, we will draw in a sixteenth of an inch on the inside vertical edge outside of the hole for the box here. And we will across the top but not across the bottom of that opening. Again, that's because we've got a little sixteenth of an inch built in. So I can hold this right and you can see it from this piece of chipboard that's coming for the porch. And we will draw in across the tops. So I'll get that accomplished and show you what that looks like. So this is what the template looks like with its red lines. On the outside left, I have a red line at the top, along the top and the outside of the opening, and then a red line at the bottom. On the outside right, I have red lines up at the ridge, again at the top, and the side of the opening and then at the bottom. On the inside templates it's easier to keep track of what needs to be done because the only place you don't put a red line is on the outside verticals. You go around the entire opening for both the bottom and the top holes and then at the ridge lines the top line and the bottom. And then if you recall when we were constructing section 3 we traced out some of the pieces that we had. I, I've, although I've got templates for the <clears throat> excuse me ceiling right now I'm just going to cut pieces for the floor and what I've done is draw a red line inside of the pencil lines that I drew before. Now here on the outside I ignored the notch. Sorry if this isn't in focus quite good enough, but I just continued that red line down to the corner. So I'll cut out all my templates and then I'll be back.
we need to cut out one more template from this inside section and that is around the top and here I've drawn a blue line inside of the black lines and then I've also just connected down the verticals and I'll cut those two pieces out and then I'll join them on that vertical on the inside. I have my templates all cut out and obviously there's a little more work we're going to need to do for the floors of our niches but before we can even test the uh, main parts we need to do something else on our box and that is to take some of our joining strips and I've just turned it inside out so that the score tape is on the inside and what we want to do is finish off the outside corners by taking strips and put them lengthwise up here and then cut just cut some short ones for the little areas so I'll do add those strips and then I'll be back to size the templates so I've test fit my outside pieces using some repositionable adhesive and I made a little adjustment at one of the tops but other than that they seem to be looking very good and so now we can work on sizing these templates for the floors and also the back of section one on the inside and the process is the same for all of them I'm just going to put a little bit of repositionable adhesive on there and then for the I'm going to start with the outside floor and I'm going to put this corner so that it comes the the two edges here and here will be a sixteenth of an inch away and the back one should be that as well so I will do that and then I've just kind of got some little wings um, stuck up here so I'm going to push them down and use my fingernail to make a crease along the two sides now I have my piece creased and I just draw, drew some dark lines on those two creases so you could see them better and you'll cut a sixteenth of an inch inside of those creases and once you've done that go ahead and test that fit so that fits pretty well in there and then on the inside we can repeat that process for the floor that will go in both of the niches and then for the top I'll just put some temporary adhesive on here this does not get folded it's flat across the top here so just kind of look in there and get it centered and once you get it in there and it's centered and straight use your fingernail again a thumbnail to make the two creases and then you can trim that off a sixteenth of an inch inside of the creases and then we'll have our templates this is the paper that I've selected for section three and because our templates are each three inches wide I can get all four pieces out of a piece of 12 by 12 paper so I'll go ahead and first I'm going to cut strips that are three inches wide and then I'll put my templates down on top and cut out the shapes so I have all my pieces cut out I've inked the edges and put score tape on the back and I made sure in these large areas to put a couple of good strips or you know extra wide tape inside of them because there'll be some dormers that get attached there so before we think about putting them onto the building there are two sides that we will not attach yet and they are on the outside the sides that only have one opening in it so I just mark those with an X and I won't put those papers on now but I will put the two papers on the inside so here are the outside papers on 
and I've left these two sides without paper for now. Now for the niches, these are the papers I've selected so far. I'm using this paper for the outside floor. It was the same paper that was on the inside back wall of uh, section 2's niches and then for the floors and ceiling I'm sorry just the floors the two floors on the inside of the box here and here I'm using a scrap that came from the outside paper of section 1 and I'll be able to get both of those out of that scrap and then for the back walls in these two niches We've, of course, got a, a template for the top one, and then I've just used that template as a measuring to make sure it, the width should work for the bottom one as well, and it does. And then to get the height, I've just cut a piece of scrap paper here that I can stick in and go from edge to edge and make a crease up there take my pencil and do that crease so you'll be able to see it and then I can measure measure that distance and subtract an eighth of an inch and that will give the height so this distance minus an eighth of an inch for the height and the same width as for the uh, back wall on the upper niche. So I'll go ahead and get all my little pieces cut out. So here is the paper on the inside niches and then on the outside, I hope you saw the note where I switched to a different paper. I thought I might not have enough of the uh, light colored orange checks to go on the final inside niche. So I switched to this paper and then I also made a decision on the back panel and that is going to be these large pumpkins and I've cut this three inches by two and three eighths, three by two and three eighths. And so now there's the outside niche finished. And that's the decorative paper to this point for section 3.